everyone, and welcome to Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host, Rob Bentley, and thanks for tuning in. On today's show, we'll recap a championship weekend for the Ferris State hockey team, an exciting postseason run for men's basketball, and a great start to the spring for the Ferris State softball team. And we'll start with Bulldog Hockey and join first uh, by associate head coach uh, Drew Famulak. And coach, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Congratulations on the Bulldogs' uh, great weekend. Uh, won the WCHA Final Five championship. Uh, an exciting atmosphere in, in Grand Rapids, and uh, great to see the Bulldogs come out on top. You know, Robbie, you hit it right on the head. The, uh, the atmosphere <coughs> I thought was electric. I know standing on the bench um, as, as you're watching the play in the crowd, I mean, it was the atmosphere was really, really good. It was exciting. And I know our kids were, were extremely happy, uh, you know, with the turnout. And uh, it, overall, like I said, it was, it was just electric in that building. How much of a lift did that give uh, your, your guys and your hockey team uh, playing uh, so close to home uh, down in Grand Rapids? Yeah, no question. You know, it was almost a home game for us, uh, 50 miles away. And the Bulldog Nation came out strong, and it's very much appreciated by, you know, not only our team, but our, our staff and our administration as well. As we go to some of the highlights, uh, you started off on Friday night after that big uh, series uh, sweep over Northern Michigan, took on a very good Michigan Tech team, and uh, a tough game, a defensive struggle in uh, that Friday night semifinal game. Well, we knew it was going to be, you know, three of the four games that we had against them were one goal games. One went into overtime, and, and we knew it was going to be a defensive battle. We just wanted to make sure that we kept them off the power play as much as possible. Here early, uh, you'll get some scoring chances here, but uh, Jamie Phillips, a veteran in net for Michigan Tech, and on the Bulldog side, Darren Smith had a strong performance. Yeah, Jamie Phillips, he's a draft pick by the Winnipeg Jets, and you're going to see him probably sign here uh, sooner than later, but, but he's been one of the best goalies in our league for a couple years now. Back and forth uh, here, no score uh, after one period, and going into the second period, uh, yeah, both teams again uh, really battling, but uh, nobody able to find uh, find the back of the net. Yeah, I thought both goalies, and, and you had mentioned Darren, he was very uh, uh, locked in. You know, his movements were were you know very low, which is good for him. And uh, you can see right there, he made a save with no rebound, and uh, he he was locked in as well as uh, Jamie as well. As you go uh, through the second period here, and uh, you go into the third period scoreless, uh, what what was the emphasis uh, in trying to get that goal uh, in the third period? Well, we had chances. You know, you saw Lowney there. We had some rebound chances that occurred, and, and like I said, we, we knew it was probably going to be a one-goal game, so we needed to hang around the net a little bit more. Bulldogs uh, get on the board uh, here coming up shortly. Kenny Babinski will get the the eventual game winner on a, on a shot here. Uh, to put you in front. Well, we worked on that. We wanted to bring that guy high just inside the blue line. We worked on that all week, actually. And if you watch that play, uh, Jared Van Warmer's right in front of Phillips. He did a great job screening, and he really didn't have much of a chance on that one. Got tight down the stretch after you get that goal, and then uh, you try to fend off uh, Michigan Tech as they uh, generated some, some chances here late in the game. Yeah, and then, you know, Jerry had a chance there to ice it with a minute left. But, uh, but like I said, we knew it was going to be a one goal game, and it was just a matter of, uh, you know, managing the puck in the minutes late in the game there. You get the victory in the semis, and that sets up uh, the championship game against Minnesota State, and a team that uh, you're certainly familiar with, playing them in the Final Five each of the past two years, going into the, the Saturday Final. Yeah, I know, and, and like I said, we, uh, we lost them both times, um, and we wanted to make sure that you know, we kept them off the power play. You know, that, that's one of their, their keys, and I thought we did that. They did score a power play goal, uh, but we, we limited their opportunities, and, and we had some chances, and defensively, we really locked it down the last probably period and a half. Both of the goals uh, here early, uh, one for each team coming in the in the first period. Uh, we'll see Minnesota State get on the board uh, here first, but the Bulldogs are able to strike right back. Yeah, it was a great play. Um, um, like if you watch here, the puck comes over in the shot, and, and Gervais picks this thing right out of the air. Uh, he's a very dynamic player, and not too many kids can do that, so you got to give him a lot of credit. And you know, we turn around I think three minutes later, and uh, the shot by Anselmini. Uh, if you look at it, there's just not a lot of room out there. And uh, he, he kind of walks down the wall and, and goes top shelf. And you can see Huggins didn't really see it until it was in the back of the net. But that's just a big time shot. One to one after uh, the first period. And uh, Bulldogs gave up some chances there early on. But uh, it seemed like he got better defensively as the game went on. They got just one opportunity, uh, one shot on goal in the third period. We did. I, I thought the last 30 minutes we managed the puck really well. Um, we kept it going north. And like I said, in the third, I think Smitty only had maybe one, maybe two saves. Bulldogs uh, here in the second period uh, trying to Get the go-ahead goal, and uh, we'll see it. Uh, kind of an unlikely uh, goal uh, here to get the go-ahead goal. Yeah, in the second period. it was a penalty shot. But if you look, the referee look where his positioning is behind the net, and he sees the hand. Um, uh, the boy does cover it, and he he pushes it to the side, which you know obviously now we'll see Jerry go top shelf on this one. Uh, how difficult was it to try to pick the guy that was going to take the take the shot here in the penalty shot? You know, coach did it, so I don't know. I don't even know what the conversation <laughs> was. I was down at the end of the bench, but you know, Jerry's. A, I think a, since he's been here, he's a point of game in playoffs. And uh, 
like I said, he uh, he came down and, and did a little bit of a pump fake there and went upstairs, and, and it was just a great shot. That goal uh, gives you a 2-1 to lead going into the third and final period, and then uh, we mentioned it, uh, a big uh, defensive performance here in, in the final period. Yeah, you see there we're blocking shots. We're, we're in the right lanes, and I, and I thought our overall structure uh, defensively, you can see our sticks are on the ice. We're denying them passes. Um, we're, we're pushing the perimeter, so they never really get inside. You can see we keep pushing. Um, and it forces him out into the neutral zone here, and uh, Jerry makes a nice play where he, he dumps it, and there's only a couple seconds left at that point. And here we'll see the Bulldogs celebrate at the end of the ball game uh, as you take a two to one victory, and uh, you win the Broadmoor Trophy, and, and the opportunity to move on to the NCAA tournament. How exciting was it uh, there at the end of the game? Well, I think if you look at it, you know, you have certain check marks, and uh, we've had home ice, uh, we've won the McNaughton Cup, and we had not won the Broadmoor. So that was obviously uh, a check, and when you're developing your program, that's something that we wanted to, to, to gain and maintain. And we knew that in order to, to get to the NCAAs, we had to win that trophy, and it's just great effort by our guys uh, all weekend. You get the NCAA tournament bid, uh, move on to the West Regional against St. Cloud State. Uh, how exciting is it to be back in the NCAA tournament for the third time uh, here in five years? Yeah, it's really exciting. I mean, our guys are looking forward to it. We gave them a day off today just to uh, regroup. You know, um, heal some bumps and bruises, and, and we'll get back at it tomorrow. But you know, we're going to the Excel Center. We played there. We had our final five there last year. We're familiar with the building, um, uh, with the rink. So now it's just a matter of you know getting out there on Thursday and, and getting a practice in there Friday, and then playing Saturday. Take on a very good St. Cloud State team. Uh, what, what do you know about the Huskies going into that matchup? Yeah, very good. I, I worked with Bob Motzkow, their head coach. We worked at Miami together years ago, and. Uh, I think right now their power play is running about 29%. So we got to limit the amount of penalties that we take. We want to keep this game uh, five on five. And then uh, hopefully we can draw some penalties on our own. Uh, but they're dynamic. They got good depth up front. Their goaltending has been really good. But I think the key to them, though, is that power play at 29%. And the other half of the bracket, uh, Denver and Boston University, not to look ahead, but uh, talk about this four team regional and, and how strong it is. Yeah, very strong. Uh, I got a chance to see Denver on TV. About a month ago, they were playing North Dakota when they swept North Dakota at home. Uh, haven't seen BU yet. We're in the process of uh, you know watching them on tape this week. But uh, you know right now with 16 teams left, and you look at each regional, and you're going like, boy, they're all they're all tough. And uh, you know whoever gets the next two games is is back to Tampa. What does it mean uh, for the Bulldogs to be back in the NCAA tournament and uh, to continue the success that uh, you've had here, uh, especially over the past decade or so? Yeah, it's been huge. You know we we get a couple of league titles, like you said, uh, our third bid in the last five five six years. And uh, we're, we're just excited. Our kids have done a tremendous job of preparing for each year, and uh, we're just excited to be back in the tournament. Talk finally uh, here about the improvement that's been made uh, here to, to culminate in this uh, here in the second half of the season. Well, it's funny. You know, we, we, uh, everybody was kind of wondering how our goaltending was going to be at the start of the year. And, you know, Darren and Charles have stepped in and done a great job. And, and Darren, you know, down the stretch has been able to fine-tune his game and, and uh, uh, carry the mail for us. But... You know, we've been fortunate because we have four senior defensemen back there, and it's made life a little bit easier for our team as a whole. We've been able to maybe cover up some mistakes that if we had a younger decor back there uh, might have exposed us. But, but those four kids back there uh, have done a tremendous job in terms of, um, I don't want to say making it easier, but maybe managing the puck, managing the game, uh, helping our penalty kill, which I think right now is third in the conference. So. Uh, you know, kudos to those kids for being able to uh, take some heavy minutes off maybe some of our forwards and our goalies early. Well, Coach, congratulations again on the WCHA uh, Final Five Championship. Best of luck uh, here in the NCAA Tournament this week. Great. Thanks, Rob. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.